Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Gavin Scriven. People call me Dr. Gav and with me is the founder of the non-surgical penis augmentation procedure uh, we call Calibre, Dr. Jace Notes. Thanks Dr. Gav and together we are the Dick Doctors and we are going to be talking about all things penis. Uh, our area of expertise is um, injectable penis augmentation. There's a, a lot to talk about um, penises and uh, together myself and uh, Dr. Gavin will be doing that. Jace, uh, Dr. Jace, how are you going? Yes, good, good to speak to you, um, Dr. Gav. Uh, together, obviously, we are the uh, the Dick Doctors, and we're going to be talking uh, all things Dick today. And um, today, we're sort of looking at a a different sort of topic. It's the the problems, the complications that we've seen with um, injectable penis uh, augmentation, uh, problems that you know we've created ourselves, problems that we've seen. Um, patients come in from uh, other clinics and um, it's an important thing for guys to understand uh, that, that medicine isn't this perfect thing where we can create um, you know, a perfect gigantic penis every time we do a treatment. Um, there are things that guys have to understand when they're coming into this uh, uh, treatment uh, and the more guys understand about what they're getting into uh, the better. Uh, and for us, you know, it's very important to be uh, open about it. Uh, and, you know, we've spent six years now learning uh, this procedure, getting better at it so that we can minimize any of these problems. So, Dr. Gav, uh, have you ever had a problem with a, a, a penis augmentation? Yeah, I, I would love to right now say absolutely not and everything's perfect. But, yeah, you're right. Yeah, medicine isn't... Um, uh, you know, an exact perfect science all the time. There is this, an art to it as well. Uh, and we have been learning over the last six years, as you said, and refining the procedure and perfecting it. Um, so yeah, I have um, uh, seen a couple of um, issues um, that we, we see patients come back with that we help them along with. And obviously, um, you know, um, help, help them get a good result in the end. Um, but I guess um, some of the things I've seen uh, just quickly, uh, definitely asymmetry would have to be up there. Um, it's probably the main, the main issue that guys have um, after an injectable penis augmentation procedure. Um, uh, but having said that, I really do talk to my patients about this beforehand. So it's not something that is really that surprising. Um, it's yeah. part of, uh, as part of the procedure, we're putting in a, a a decent amount of dermal filler. There's a little bit of swelling in the beginning. Um, during that time, the dermal filler can migrate uh, and you can end up with some asymmetry. Um, so, and it is something that they should know about before the procedure so they're not entirely shocked. And as part of our protocol, and I, I'm sure you do the same thing, we, we do the procedure over usually two treatment sessions um, for this reason um, so that we can actually have a look to see if there's any asymmetry uh, and then address it by the um, topping it up with a little bit more filler um, yeah. and correcting the symmetry. Or we always have the option of dissolving small bits of um, dermal filler as well. Um, so that's probably the number one thing or, um, you know, minor complication or, and risk that guys have is, is some asymmetry afterwards. Um, yeah, and absolutely. And... The great thing is that um, we're able to blame the patient for a lot of these um, uh, <laughs> issues. Uh, so guys who have um, uh, a nice tight circumcision, especially one closer to the, to the glands, uh, it holds the, the product um, in position uh, better. Uh, some guys have a very loose circumcision and uh, that can allow a little bit more, more mobility. Um, obviously, guys who haven't been circumcised at all, then that can allow more mobility of the, of the product. Mm. And even the, the circumcision itself, some guys uh, have more scarring down of that, uh, of that circumcision down to that uh, uh, deeper layer of, um, of, of fascia, the, the fibrous tissue. And um, depending on when, where the circumcision line is, you know, sometimes it's right up close to the, to the head of the penis, you know, and I've seen it like five centimeters down, like mid shaft, mm. and um, and then that can can cause some some difficulties in getting the uh, the filler to go past it because you want to have this nice even um, taper in the um, in in the product. So um, some of these things are sort of patient sort of characteristics, and then the other one is uh, shrinkage. So guys who get a lot of um, of shrinkage 
they're a grower rather than a, a shower, then yeah, when their penis sort of shrinks up, it can fold and create um, an irregularity in it. And then, as you say, that's why we do it as a two-step procedure and bring them back and, and even things out a little bit. And that's also then the, the advantage of having a hyaluronic acid filler where you can tune it with um, the medications to, um, uh, to ad uh, address that. So, yeah, those are um, minor sort of things, but they're the sort of things that because we've been doing it for years and done hundreds of cases, mm. we're pretty good at avoiding those sorts of um, issues. Mm. And often, um, often guys are asking me how they can avoid that happening in the first place. Um, and I guess I'll quickly mention what I sort of talk about with them. But yes, it is um, stop trying to... Um, avoid any severe retraction, which often is difficult, obviously, if it's out of your control. But we do have medication that we can give uh, that we've talked about in one of our other episodes um, that helps um, prevent some of the more severe retraction in some guys. Um, but also just making sure in those first couple of days when the filler hasn't fully integrated um, into that space uh, and when there is a bit of swelling and there's more risk of the filler moving, making sure they're um, checking the penis regularly, that it's straight, it's not um, folded up in one side of the pants in one direction and squashed up and they're driving six hours somewhere. Um, yeah. you know, they need to stand up, be at home, stretched out, um, make sure that it's straight. And we offer a, a, a crepe style bandage um, that's fairly elastic that can help keep it in, in a straight line. Um, and also some gentle massage if there's no tenderness and the, the swelling is not too significant, then some gentle massage to help um, keep the product in place uh, in those first couple of days. And um, certainly I've seen some guys come back with some amazing, like perfect symmetry after one treatment. Uh, and I talk to them about what they've done. And this is a, a lot of what I just said is what, what they have done is kept it straight. They've been meticulous about, you know, mass, just gently massaging it in those first couple of days. Yeah. Although the funny thing is you get some guys who just, don't want to touch it don't want to look at it um it's like they're scared of it um afterwards um and, and guys who sort of say well you know it's, it's it's our job to to get it all smooth and even mm -hmm. um which uh so it's, it's, it's not a, a great way of going into it you know you've got to um be uh working with us so that we can achieve that that best outcome yeah so that's the irregularity sort of side um, then there are some issues that are uh, potential problems with the, the product itself. Uh, and the, the thing that we tend to think of, obviously, is something called a granuloma. It's when the body reacts to um, uh, a foreign substance. Uh, and we've been injecting these fillers in the face for you know, up to 20 years now. And we have found that the occasional patient will react to a, to a filler. Uh, and when it reacts uh, in, in the penis, then you can get get a lump. And you know, I know that you've seen these sort of problems yourself as well. Yes, I have. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Whether it's a granuloma or, or a post-inflammatory type nodule, um, I guess unless you biopsy the the lump itself and send it off for analysis, we're not entirely sure. But it is definitely some kind of inflammatory immune response that's causing uh, a hard nodule, uh, and it's a reaction between, as you said, the, the foreign substance and, and the person's body. Um, yep. And that is uh, often, um, unfortunately, out of our control how that ha happens and how the body reacts. Um, and it is a risk that we have to tell everybody about before we do the procedure. Um, and again, the good news is if you're using hyaluronic acid, um, you know, the, it is reversible, the filler can be dissolved. Um, but there are other things we can do to help um, stop this reaction, um, to reduce the reaction, reduce the inflammation um, by giving certain medications early on. Um, and we've seen, or I've seen personally some really good response and actually almost being able to get it back to a, a normal type um, uh, outcome um, using these medications. If, we, if we're yeah. on top of it early and if guys are aware of it and actually contact us and we, we work together to fix it. Yeah, I mean, and that's great that we, um, we have the ability and we, we keep close contact um, with our patients. So if they have any worries, they can come back and uh, discuss these things uh, with us. Exactly. And we've seen these reactions, you know, in the face, in the lips and these sorts of things. And that's where we've all learnt how to, to manage these sort of um, lumps and bumps. Um, never quite had a guy come back and sort of say, oh, I've got a great big lump on my penis and it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, my partner loves it. But um, I was always waiting for somebody to say that. But I, personally, it's been a long time since I've um, 
uh, seen one of these granulomas. And that's something that we've changed over time as well. Uh, just with experience, you know, what you know, we thought was the best product for, for, for doing um, penis augmentation. And then you find you're getting some reactions to it. And it may be because we put 15 or 20 mils in as opposed to only putting one mil in a cheek. Maybe there's something about that that tends to make it more likely to happen. Yeah. But yeah, it's, for me, it's been a long time since I've seen a sort of a granuloma um, reaction, which is, which is great. And of course, there's the stimulatory fillers as well, which then last a lot, lot longer. Uh, I've never seen a granuloma in the penis from that, but I have seen it in the face. And, um, and that was an interesting thing because um, she did like it because it just increased the, uh, the amount of, uh, of augmentation she got in, in her cheeks. Um, uh, but there, we managed it with steroid injections and, and that sort of kept on, a, uh, kept it, uh, at bay. Mm. Okay. So another thing that we need to, to think about is infection. And, you know, certainly we don't want an infection, uh, in this area. Uh, it's why we do it as a sterile procedure. So, so guys, um, we, we wash the area with, um, uh, antiseptic, we laid blue towels, um, all around, uh, there, there's no touching um, uh, uh, once everything is, is blue. Uh, we use sterile gloves and um, we keep the, the pr process sterile because the last thing we want is infection. Now, I have seen a significant infection. It wasn't one that, um, that I did myself, um, but it, it was a, a full-on infection and um, initially treated with uh, oral antibiotics, but it was swelling up. Uh, to the point that it actually had an abscess. So an abscess is where there's a collection of pus. And uh, uh, I had to take this guy actually to, to theater uh, to knock him out. And he had this weird um, thing with a, a bridging band of tissue on his circumcision uh, scar. Uh, and there was a, a drainage point for the, um, for the abscess sort of there. Uh, so open up, drain this, um, pass out, flushed it all out. And then with antibiotics, it very quickly um, uh, got better. Mm. But uh, uh, it certainly reinforced to us the importance of, uh, of keeping things clean, telling guys to keep, keep it really clean um, afterwards. And we've not had any um, further issues um, like that. But uh, cleanliness, and this is what sort of worries me when hear about other doctors starting to do this and um you know they they hear about it on youtube or something and then figure they'll just go and do it and I've, I've seen videos of people doing it on on youtube and thinking well there's no sterile drapes they're, they're not sterile gloves mm. touching all sorts of things mm. um and everything's fine and, until it's not fine mm. um mm. so yeah doing it sterile i think is very important yeah and as you mentioned um uh we do it as a sterile procedure, but dermal filler in itself normally is not a fully sterile procedure in the face. For example, you see um, nurses and doctors injecting in the face and the cheeks and the lips, um, not as a sterile procedure. Um, and uh, yes, normally there's no infections or minimum, you barely ever see an infection in the face. However, it can happen. Infections happen in the face as well. Um, but I think in this area, in the penis, um, the consequences of an, of an infection is a little bit... Um, uh, worse uh, of an outcome uh, and then, of course there's some some risky infections um, that, that can happen that can have quite um, bad consequences in that area um, so we as you said treat this as a as a sterile procedure to to avoid that ever happening in the first place but we also have a particular aftercare regime and we ask that guys follow that aftercare regime very closely um, to minimize any risk of infection so they do have to take it seriously yeah 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 Okay, well, let's quickly touch on, on, on a few other things. Actually, something else that can come from the, the treatment is occasionally we'll use uh, an injectable medicine for a guy to um, have an erection while we're doing the, the procedure. Years yeah. ago, I used to do it every time we did a treatment. Uh, and there was some advantage of having that penis sort of stretched out to its full length for injecting. Um, but as you know, we've got really experienced with it, you find you don't need to do that very often now unless a guy particularly comes in for that second session and says, um, it looks fine, flaccid, 
totally happy. But when it's erect, there's this one area where there's a little bit of a dip and you just, and actually if you grab the, the penis and really stretch it out often, you, you can see it, but sometimes they're really keen on you creating an erection for them. Mm. Um, sounds a bit funny sometimes when you <laughs> say it out loud. Um, and then, yeah, so you use this, this medication and an erection is great, you know, for 15 minutes or an hour, maybe a couple of hours, but an erection for four hours or six or 24 hours uh, is not so great. And uh, uh, I, I've had one experience with a guy who was a, a bodybuilder and, um, you know, potentially using um, various medications to help with the bodybuilding. Anyway, really fit guy. And he had this uh, prolonged uh, erection. And again, we've got medications and protocols for it. But I had a call in the middle of the night, midnight, uh, telling me that he still had this erection. And I was saying, well, have you taken the tablets? Have you done all these things? He said, oh, no, he hadn't. <laughs> so, I said, so I said, well, there's an instruction sheet that we gave you and these medications, do all of that. <laughs> Would have been better if you did that four hours ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a prolonged erection is painful and a really prolonged erection beyond 24 hours uh, is damaging. So we don't, we don't want to have that. Exactly right. And um, I haven't had that experience myself, but I have, seen, have heard and I know of a patient that had that experience uh, after receiving one of those um, injections to uh, create an erection to do this procedure um, and you know, actually ended up having to come back into the clinic and um, uh, deal with it in the clinic um, uh, by injecting another medication to help reduce that erection. Um, and so, yeah, as, as you said, that that is a, a, a medical um, induced uh, complication that can happen as a result of in, injecting um, this substance to cause an erection that was sometimes used for the procedure. Yeah, yeah. So, again, from years of experience, at least we now have protocols uh, so we can uh, manage that and, uh, and avoid it. Uh, and yeah, it's not something that I've seen um, for, for years. Um, then I'll think about some of the problems I've seen from injectable penis augmentation coming in from elsewhere. Um, I had a patient who had PMMA injected in uh, Korea. So PMMA is polymethyl metacrylate. Uh, it's essentially um, like ground up acrylic plexiglass, but medical sort of version of it. And it can be used uh, uh, for permanent penile uh, augmentation. Uh, there's only one doctor uh, in Mexico who I would suggest it is, is worth seeing for that procedure. Uh, he's got a vast experience. Uh, but this guy had um, you know, a penis that's just full of lumps and bumps. And, um, and it was a worry because you know, this um, PMMA is, is plastic. Uh, injected in under the skin. And the only thing that we had was to inject more filler around it to try and hide the lumps and bumps. Uh, but you're never keen at all to in inject when there's this um, permanent filler in there. So it was, a, it was a concern doing it. Unfortunately, we didn't have any issues and it did hide those lumps and bumps. Mm. But that can be the problem with um, permanent fillers, especially if you're having it done by somebody who's not a, a real expert, mm. is that you get permanent complications. Mm, mm. And, and a similar story I have is on that same line, along the same lines is um, after um, some clients have had uh, the fat transfer or fat injections. Um, uh, I've seen these clients uh, a few years down the track, they've had long lasting results, but some significant asymmetry and lumps um, uh, uh, that had formed after some of the fat had been resorbed. Um, or in the first place, the fat grafting hadn't been um, done in, in a very symmetrical way. Um, and really these guys have just been living with pretty significant asymmetry and an uh, unusual looking penis for a few years. Um, and, yeah, and it's uh, certainly um, really been hard to hide it, isn't it? You know, it yeah, it's right. obvious that this is not a, a natural penis. And that's it's not, not what we're aiming with an injectable yeah. penis augmentation. Yeah. It's, it's sort of natural, but just big. Exactly. But in, in a similar way, I did, was able to help these guys with using hyaluronic acid to straighten out the, the penis and it worked actually quite well. Um, so, you know, there are things we can do sometimes to help um, with these issues. Um, look, we're probably running out of time, uh, but really oh. I think that um, 
It Probably covers it fairly well, though. <laughs> it does. It covers, I think, most of the things that, that we've seen. Um, but certainly, if there's anything else that we think of, we may may bring it up in, a, in an episode uh, later down the track. But the most important thing is to come and have a chat to us. We have the experience over the past, as you said, over the past six years. Uh, we've seen hundreds of penises and, and hundreds of results um, and understand the, the risks involved and how to avoid the, uh, any complications. So just come and have a chat to us and we can talk about mitigating any of those risks. Yes. So guys, you, um, you, you can uh, leave a, a comment, uh, but if, you, if you're not wanting to, to leave a, a comment uh, publicly, um, either on, that, on the YouTube channel or on, on the podcast, uh, then uh, you can uh, just email us uh, uh, directly. There's a, a link there that comes back to us in the clinic uh, and we will answer uh, any questions. Look, Great. good talking to you again, Dr. Gav. Always a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Jace. And together we're the Dick Doctors and this has been The Penis Show. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Great. Talk to you soon. Bye.